Ricky wants to know if her curriculum will help students learn math skills, and she's written a math test for the students to take. But how should she determine what passing means? A norm reference test scores a test by comparing a person's performance to others who are similar. You can remember norm referenced by thinking of the word normal. The object of a norm reference test is to compare a person's performance to what is normal for other people like him or her. Think of it kind of like a race. If a runner comes in third in a race, that doesn't tell us anything objectively about what the runner did. We don't know if she finished in 30 seconds or 30 minutes. We only know that she finished after two other runners and ahead of everyone else. So if Ricky decides to make her test norm referenced, she would compare students to what is normal for that age, grade, or class. Examples of norm reference tests include the SAT, IQ tests, and tests that are graded on a curve. Anytime a test offers a percentile rank, it is a norm reference test. If you score at the 80th percentile, that means that you scored better than 80% of people in your group. Norm reference tests are a good way to compensate for any mistakes that might be made in designing the measurement tool. For example, what if Ricky's math test is too easy and everybody aces it? If it is a norm reference test, that's okay, because you're not looking at the actual scores of the students, but how well they did in relation to students in the same age group, grade, or class. But norm reference tests aren't perfect. They aren't completely objective and make it hard to know anything other than how someone did in comparison to others. But what if we want to know about a person's performance without comparing them to others? A criterion reference test is scored on an absolute scale with no comparisons made. It is interested in one thing only. Did you meet the standards? Let's go back to our race scenario. Saying that a runner came in third place is norm reference because we are comparing her to the other runners in the race. But if we look at her time in the race, that's criterion reference. Saying she finished the race in 58.42 is an objective measure that is not a comparison to others. Tests that are pass-fail are criterion reference, as are many tests for certifications. Any test where there's a certain score that you have to achieve to pass is criterion reference. So, for example, Ricky could say that students have to get a 70% on her test to pass, which would make it a criterion reference test. As we mentioned, criterion reference tests are good for giving an objective picture of how a person does. They are often seen as more fair than norm reference tests, because how well the other people in the group do on the test doesn't affect your score. But it is difficult to measure certain things, and criterion reference tests run the risk of not giving a good picture of what people can and cannot do. Going back to Ricky, if her test is too difficult and the whole class fails, a criterion reference score will not take into account that the test was difficult. So in short, both criterion referenced and norm reference tests have positives and negatives. A researcher has to decide which is better for their study, a measurement tool that offers information about how people do in relation to others, or one that looks at non-comparative data of how students do. Psychological measures.